Hey guys, I'm Ryan248 here. Welcome back to part 48 of Josh CCLP4. This is Holiday Trail. It is a chip collection level. And I made a level, I, I actually made a level inspired by this. Uh, it's, it plays very differently and yet very similarly at the same time. It's uh, Aquatic Ruins. And I think it's one of my best levels just because playing this made me realize I didn't have that many open levels. And I still put my own spin on the idea. It's still very much an uh, open. It's still so, like it's still somewhat constrained, admittedly. But at the same time, like it's not that constrained. And there's definitely some aesthetic stuff that was uh, borrowed from this. Uh, because it was aquatic, I went with a predominantly blue theme. I'm not worried about losing that red key. I know there's so many extras in this level. So yeah. Uh, I think I'd prefer Aquatic Ruins to this slightly. Just because Aquatic Ruins has a little more going on with it. I wonder, I wonder if this red lock is what I missed with my um, route. Because I know I missed some pretty obvious stuff in my initial routes for this level. So yeah, we need six red keys to exit, but we have all of the chips now, so... Well, now. Then you get the green key. And... Yeah, 204. So holiday trail complete. I do like playing that level. So here's one everybody's seen me play. Here's some one uh, a lot of people have seen me play before. Serene Village. So this was one of Josh's entries for the uh, January, I think it was, um, create, February? Um, Holiday Trail was for a competition where the goal was to make a level that looked good on first viewing in the editor, and then the first was fun in the first minute of playing. Uh, Serene Village and a couple other levels like it, uh, you'll see soon enough, were for the one I ran. Yes, I ran a create. It was fun. Um, where there were restricted pallets of tiles. And all all you had to do was design a good level. All you all the, yeah, everybody had the goal of the competition was to design a level using each of a few different pallets of tiles. Um I carefully picked each palette to uh, kind of reflect a different design style. This one was very much geared toward mazes, but not so heavily geared toward mazes, so that you couldn't uh, devise a puzzle based around keys and locks. And the only monster in it was uh, tanks. But because you had tanks, you could do quite a bit with that if you so chose. And I think it was... Uh, Eric, uh, Eric Schmidt, who actually did go that route and made a tank, and made a tank puzzle. Oh, I'm screwed because I didn't do the green lock section first. I was so focused on playing the level and just explaining what the uh, story behind it was that I completely forgot about that gimmick. Yeah, that's the one thing I wasn't a huge fan of for that. This, but uh, this was my favorite level to play from that palette. I'm going to be saying those words a lot, by the way. Just worth noting. Because uh, Josh's designs were very well done. There were a couple things in them I wasn't huge on. Uh, most notably with the final palette level. But uh, we'll, we'll, I'll cover that when I get to it. So yeah, we'll deal with the socket nails first. Um, yeah, when I was making the pallets, I wanted to make sure that they were feasible and that like, you actually could make good levels with them. So what I ended up doing to uh, test that was I made levels of my own and I had my... Uh, 
I gave the pallets to a couple family members who play the game and was like, and went, go. And ultimately, they turned up with some pretty different stuff than what I came up with. I made more uh, puzzle-heavy levels with each pallet. Yes, including this one. Um, key in My level Key Insight, which I actually really like, uh, I used this pallet. And it was just based around picking up keys. So one tile Josh did not use that was in this palette was the teleport tile. So moving on to another one, which I think is my second favorite level that the competition produced, uh, Western Standards of Living. So this one is exactly what it looks like. It's a very straightforward level to play, and it is a ton of fun. Like, I'm just going to let the level speak for itself, um, other than the fact that uh, when devising this palette, I definitely went with the um, sort of red and blue palette. It's like every tile sort of had an opposite. Yeah, I'll let the level speak for itself and explain my thought process behind some of the palettes, because I haven't actually done that. So I wanted this one to be very red and blue focused. You could do a lot of different things with what it was. Uh, my level ended up using um, the symmetry of just to uh, create diametric opposition, which is actually a pretty cool uh, puzzle level that's completely symmetric with one twist. Dirt's replaced by gravel, bombs by thieves, uh, gliders by other stuff, and just so on. I just really liked the idea behind that. And I was like, I always wanted to try doing one of those symmetry type levels. And again, I went and put my own little spin on it by mirroring it. Anyway, enough about my levels. This level's fantastic, and you should all go play it now. It's not hard, but it's just fun. And fun trumps all, if you ask me. red key, and yeah, that is Western Standards of Living. I really, really like that level. Speaking of levels I really, really like, here's Nectar Meadow. Uh, this palette, I tried to do something a little different, and I focused in on... This is the first one that allowed blocks to be used. Yes, yeah, something as commonly used as blocks was not in other palettes. And I really wanted to go with, like, an ice-type theme here, but you definitely had options. Um, Josh and I... So the in most interesting thing about this one is that you don't have a wall tile. You've got thin wall. I think I gave thin walls, but, uh... There's only so much you can do with thin walls. Like this, this is my favorite level that the competition produced. It's way better than the one I came up with for it, even though they both used the uh, green lock socket outside aesthetic. So as you can see, there's the exit there. That is the only exit in the level, and you just swap back and forth between skates and suction boots, and it just it works so well. Like, and then this part, get a pair of skates, go in here, lose the skates while you're loading it up. It just, it works. I, like, this level is fantastic, and just like the last one, everyone should go play it. I forgot I didn't have the skates there for a sec. So there's still a pair of skates back there, and I do need it. Yeah, like, this level uses thieves as an obstacle very, very well. So here's a section that will be, uh, 
familiar to you all later. Hint, hint, spoilers. Okay, so just to explain why that's hint, hint, spoilers. Uh, so a few weeks ago, I think it was a few weeks ago, um, I finally sat down and designed a level composed entirely of sections of other levels. I'd done so with the uh, vignette levels in uh, Ultimate Chapter 5, which took 9x9 nine nine copies of sections from... Uh, one for official levels, one from custom levels. Okay, teeth, teeth, teeth. And that worked out pretty nicely, but I I didn't feel like that was exactly the best way to go about the concept, because there were seven rooms, and they were all discrete rooms. Like, they weren't really their own cohesive whole. And so what I ended up doing from there was I went and created the cohesive whole. Um, so I took 16 7x7 seven seven selections from uh, Ultimate Chip 4 levels, and I made a level as... Yeah, I made a level out of those parts. It's pretty tough, actually. It's one of the toughest levels I've ever made. Um, anyway, um... Then, I just, then Josh went and did a similar thing with a couple of his sets. And I do not remember any of how this level works. I remember being very confused by it, and... It's honestly kind of annoying in a few places. But yeah, the gimmick here is this level is very, uh, this palette was very machinery focused. Gotta say my favorite level from this palette was my own. And I'm not just saying that because I built it. I'm saying that because I felt like, uh... Like, Pyrite Factory was the best that used this palette. Though, this one came in second for the competition for this palette. Second to, uh, Chipster's Shapes on the Wall. I don't think I can go that way. So the interesting thing about this palette, though, is I threw in, um, a couple things, that, but not, uh, corresponding tiles. So you have flippers, you've got skates, you don't have, you never get fire boots, and more interestingly, you never get a thief. I'm so lost. <laughs> What's back this way, anyway? Right, right, I have control over the toggle button. So, yeah, um... And then back on the topic of the uh, medleys, like, I made mine, because I wanted to make mine. And then Josh made his. <laughs> like, Josh made one for Josh L5 with uh, 8x8 sections, he made one for Josh L6. Uh, and, both... and after that, um, he made edits to his sections. I did not for mine, because I felt like that was a bit of a cop-out, given the level type. Oh yeah, a blue button is under is under a block. Make sure every brown button is pressed by any means and keep a lookout on your surroundings. Oh. <laughs> um. So now I have two yellow keys. But I don't know what I can I don't know what I can do with that. Oh, come on. I needed to move this block up into the trap, because it's going to be under that. Back to the start. Yeah, I didn't like this level too much when I first played it. I'm still not that huge on it, admittedly. But it is a little better than I originally gave it credit for. A little better. Not much. Because there are some things that you just have to do without knowing that you have to do them. And once you know you have to do them, it's too late. 
but you can say that about a lot of levels, so that's not really a huge mark against it. It just was not at all what I was expecting, and that's a good thing. But then it wasn't that fun to play either. I did solve it. I didn't solve every level submitted for the competition, in no small part because um, I think it was RB3 Pro Keys that submitted some absolutely absurd stuff with walkers. Like, absolutely absurd. Like, a whole lot of in what way is that even remotely reasonable type stuff. So I believe I have four blue key, four yellow keys, so I could go in there, but I'd rather do that later. So with four yellow keys, there's not actually a lot I can do. I feel like I'm gonna go around to the right. Yeah, back here I can spend one, two. Oh, three. I had only three. Okay, now what? Oh, now I can come in here. So I don't know how many keys I have now. I, I think I'm screwed again. I'm pretty sure I'm screwed again. I don't know how I'm supposed to fix that. Yeah, can you tell I wasn't really huge on this level? There's a lot of things that you need to do in a specific arbitrary order that's not even remotely clear when playing. Or even when you're looking in the editor, it's not clear. I'm going to try and do this without the editor, but I'm not confident that I'll be able to. So I'm pretty sure that's five. I might be fine. There might be an extra key in this level. But I don't know. I know there's no fire boots because there were no fire boots in the palette available. Um, so where would five be? So I'm thinking at this point, I do just need You know what, screw it. I am looking in the editor to see what these connections are. I... So how do you even get over there? Through the teleport. Okay. Down through the teleport. Yeah, because I lost that one key. Entirely because I lost that one key. I... Just really? Like, I get that the keys by the teleport are there for aesthetic purposes, but it damages the gameplay. And the, the aesthetics should serve the gameplay, not the other way around. Yeah, the level does suffer as a result of that decision. Okay, to the toggle button, I think I'm screwed. No, I just have to be smart. Yeah, 
Okay, this this level would work a little better in CC2, just a little bit, but not really. Okay, remember to move this block so we don't get screwed over by stupid crap at the end. There's a, like the other issue I have with this is there's a lot of obfuscated machinery in this level. Just, you don't know what links to where, and that is a little bit of a problem. So now I have some number of keys. And traps, and I'm going to see which button I need to get to next. I need to get to the one in the lower left corner of the map, which is the one for getting skates. I need a yellow key that I don't have to do so. Now I have a yellow key that I didn't have before. Yeah, it's like this level is just so obtuse. Partially by design, but I can't say I like that. Oh, really? Okay, so that trap button, um, apparently up by the, um, top left of the level, or up, if you go up through the teleport, that trap button's apparently worthless. Completely worthless. From what I can see. It just holds down the third trap when I can do it via a press. So where's the fourth one linked to? Okay, so we're going to push that block, then we're going to go over to... Where will this teleport lead? I have no yellow key, so it will take me back this way faster. So this is button number four. You know, that kind of makes sense where the, with, with where it's positioned. Here's button number five. So we come down here, you can see the, the fireballs in trap six. Trap six's button is the one over back through the glider air cloner area and trap seven is the one that takes four yellow keys so what does that trap button link to that blows up a bomb there's a like part of why this level is so um just obfuscating with how it's set up is due to the palette but that's kind of working against the palette rather than with the palette. And I don't know what I completely expected considering there were no chips in the uh, palette, so you had to do. So you pretty, and yellow keys were the only ones you could use. So you kind of were almost locked into this sort of level, but uh, it can definitely be done more or less clearly. And I think Pyrite Factory did the campaign style thing better. Oh crap, I'm screwed. I just screwed myself because I teleported wrong. I cannot believe I did that. I cannot. I've done this level before. Doesn't help me with knowing it's traps. Yeah. C can you tell I'm not terribly enthused by this level? Like, there's a couple of really, like, I'm, I'm doing, I'm making dumb screws even with the editor on the side to help. That doesn't usually speak well for a level.
Like, it either speaks very well for the level as a puzzle level, or very poorly as a play level. And I can think of examples of both. I mean, honestly, a lot of the time, a uh, good puzzle and doesn't play well do uh, actually go together. If you look at um, very, very late CCLP3, you can see examples of uh, areas where the puzzle levels both are very, very good puzzles, such as you can't teach an old frog new tricks, or and terrible play experiences, such as you can't teach an old frog new tricks. And I'm saying that as somebody who absolutely loved working out the solution to you can't teach an old frog new tricks. But the thing about Chip's Challenge is it's not just a puzzle-solving game. It is a game. And if it's not fun to play the level, then it's not that... It can be a great puzzle all at once if it's but it still misses part of the point. So yeah, there is an extra spot in this level. So I've hit button three. Now we go over here. We hit button four. Now we'll go hit button five. And then we're back where we were before. So let's not mess up the teleport this time. Okay, so we need to teleport down. Specifically, down. So I don't remember what that trap button does. So to the editor to check. Okay, so that trap button. <laughs> Uh, releases the ball down here in this corner, which gives me four yellow keys, which is enough to reach the final trap button. The thing is, you can amass that many yellow keys earlier in the level, and it's very easy to screw yourself over in doing so. So yeah, Golden Sand Labyrinth finally complete. I'm going to keep playing these uh, levels just because. This is Tropical Hibiscus. This level does play a little better in lengths, and in its original form... Um, whoops. From the uh, Walls of CCLP3 competition, it actually was not solvable in lengths. Due to requiring a backwards boost. So this level is... It uses the walls of Twisted Chambers, which was an interesting choice for the, uh, a, for a level for walls to use. I considered it, but couldn't really think of anything to use uh, in it. And ultimately for that competition, I did go and kind of do almost my own thing. Because I used, um, everybody get dangerous. Everybody Get Dangerous, which was a bit of a common choice, I want to say. Or a choice a lot of people considered. Just because it is such a flexible group of walls that you can do a lot with. But at the same time, it's like I went and kind of did my own thing. Because I also used, of all levels... Mice are good for something, and caves. Now, mice are good for something was interesting to work with, but caves, I cannot think, I don't think anyone else really expected. Uh, another level I considered but didn't use was Same Game, and Chipster actually did use Same Game. So, kudos to him for figuring out, or for thinking of a way of using those walls, because I couldn't. I wanted to, but I couldn't. So, yeah, originally there was a thief here, so you needed to backwards boost in order to survive. That got changed. So that was Tropical Hibiscus. I do really like that level. Uh, should I move on? Um, I'm gonna, let's see. 
Yeah, with what's left, I should do uh, this level now. I have played Ball in an Awkward Place before. I've actually solved it before. But let's go solve it again. So this level just puts balls on top of things where balls were not meant to go. And the biggest thing to worry about for this level is, again, kind of arbitrary and unclear connections. Just all over the place. And that's something that's a little hard to work around, or work with, I should say. Wait, how does this work again? I don't even remember how this part works. I know there's gravel under that block. Um, I don't have flippers. I don't have anything, really. And, and that includes options for other places to go. Wait. Another example of the you don't even know it's there um, item issue Josh has. Or not so much Josh has, but it can plague levels where stuff is hidden under other stuff. I don't know how I was expected to know that was there, especially with levels where sometimes you just don't want to push the button down. I'm just going to stop beating a dead horse on that. Where did that expression even come from? Okay, so now I have a red key and a green key, and I'm up here. Right, green key. We had the green key already so I could go get flippers, so I could come down here. Compaction. Um, stuff. I don't think I want to use my red key there just yet, but I do want the blue key. Because the blue key will let me hit this button, which gives me access to that recessed wall. So I'm pretty sure what I want to do is that. Now I, now, I still have access to that block for later use. I don't know what that later use is at the moment. But I'm pretty sure there is one. Um, so I think I go back? Because I don't see anything... I don't see any other options here. Like, the connections in this level are so just out there. So I'm pretty sure I've got two red keys. Now, I could be completely screwed, by the way. But the fact that I can gain access to over here means I don't think I am. So a hidden tank button. So we gain the toggle button. And okay. So now I think I go through the teleport. Right, so you are on a time limit with this room. It's not a very hard time limit, but it is there. And if you don't know it's coming, it can definitely catch you off guard. It's it's a very lenient time limit, but even still, you do have to be careful with it. Okay, so then there's these two trap buttons. So we move those balls out of their awkward place, and we can obtain skates. But do we want to do that just yet? Not just yet. Not just yet, I believe. So it's my newfound red key. I think I lose the fire boots. Get the suction boots. Then I can use this block to get rid of this red lock. Then I lose the suction boots, go back for the skates, and then I can go finish. I think that's how this part works. I think? I think? Um... I can't finish. What links to that? Trap. 9-1. What links to that? What links to that? Oh, you're kidding me. 
So I lose because I forgot to go hit one button that I could not have even known existed until that point. Like, unless I actively went up there, so... Okay, I guess I technically could have barely seen it as I was passing through this part. I'm still... This is a really, really cool idea for a level. It's another one of those levels I think could have been executed a little better than it was, though. Like, there's a lot of you have to do this in a certain order. And, you know, that's not inherently a, a problem at all. So, yeah, it'll, it'll be a pretty quick solve this time, I think, because I know what I'm doing. And then that will be a ball in an awkward place. If I remember right, the title here actually came from one of uh, JB's LPs. And then Josh just decided to make a level with that title. Nope, nope, no skates, no skates for me. Remove the red lock, go back this way, walk around, hit that red button, which does a whole bunch of like, not obvious mechanism stuff. Then you come back down here, get the skates, and then you can go finish. So yes, that ball on the exit is in quite the awkward place, as the level title would suggest. Anyway, we will move on to Thieves' Den, and presumably the final video of uh, Josh CCLP4 in the next video. I think I'll wrap it up in 49, which, considering I wasn't sure I was going to get to 50 back in, uh, back when I got stumped at, uh, Themeless. Where was Themeless, anyway? Themeless back at 2.48, so almost 70 levels ago, I wasn't sure. And then I just started getting a lot of fast solves. So yeah, we'll move on to Thieves' Den. And the final eight levels of the set in hopefully just the next video. If none of them take too terribly long, this one might end up being a long video of the next one. Who knows? You'll see soon enough. So yeah, thanks for watching and everything. And outros are still really hard.